Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar titled Seven Must-Have Skills for Remote Workers. I'm excited to be here. I am excited to have you back if you've been to a FlexJobs webinar before. And if this is your first one, I'm excited that you're joining us. I hope you are looking forward to the information that we are going to share today. And speaking of sharing, while we're waiting for everybody to join in Big Marker and get settled um, on their screen, if you would like to share where you are joining from in the chat section, uh, I know attendees like to see that. We like to see that. I personally uh, love seeing uh, where people are joining from all over the world. And generally, there's a new place that I haven't uh, noticed before. So Thanks for doing that. And while you do, I want to just share with you that we are recording this presentation and we will send the link to the recording and resources that were used uh, to put out this content to you uh, in email that you use to register for the webinar. You will have that within the next few days. Uh, if you don't see it, I encourage you to check your spam folder because sometimes these messages get filtered as spam. Um, we have pre-recorded the presentation portion of this webinar. However, the Q&A section that follows is live with one of our career experts. So we are looking forward to answering your questions. Those questions that you have, please include those in the Q&A section of Big Marker rather than the chat section. It helps us prioritize what questions we answer. We usually can't get to all of the questions, although we do get to a lot of them. Um, but also it gives you the opportunity to see others' questions. And if you are curious about somebody else's question, you can upvote that question or give it a thumbs up and it helps us get the most popular questions uh, answered. So all that to say, um, we're happy you're here and I think we are ready to get started. Today, we're going to talk about uh, these seven skills that help you be a great remote worker. We'll talk about how you can determine the skills you already have, how you can develop or, excuse me, decide which skills you want to develop to make yourself a more competitive applicant. We'll talk about how you can demonstrate these skills on your resume. And of course, we will end with a Q&A. All right, first, before we dive into any of that information, I do wanna share some statistics and trends with you in terms of remote work, because all of us probably know that the last three years have really changed the course of remote and hybrid work for the long term. It's really changed how we and how employees and employers conduct daily work. However, in the midst of all that is happening and has happened since 2020, the good news is that remote opportunities are steadily rising. At FlexJobs, we're continuing to see increases in remote and hybrid job postings. So here are some of the statistics that we're seeing specific to remote and hybrid work. In 2022, we saw and had, I guess, a 52% increase in hybrid jobs posted on the site over 2021. In terms of remote jobs, there were 20% more remote jobs posted on the FlexJobs site in 2022 when compared to 2021. To give this some context, before and since the pandemic started, we have some data from a Gallup survey and some other surveys. So before the pandemic started, just under 5%, 4.9% of U.S. employees worked from home full-time. And in a Gallup survey from June, 80%, 80% of U.S. employees work from home either in a hybrid or completely remote environment. Five in 10 are working hybrid. So 50% are working in a hybrid uh, model, which is partially on-site and partially off-site. Three in 10 are exclusively working remotely. And then two in 10 are working entirely in person in the office. From flex job surveys that we've conducted, we know 65% of respondents want to work remotely from home full-time uh, since the pandemic. 
31% of those surveyed would like a hybrid work schedule. So what does that equal? 96% of employees want some form of remote work. So I'd like to note too, that we have seen a significant increase in people searching for remote jobs as well. That's what that statistic says, right? 96% of employees want some type of remote work. So remote opportunities are growing, which is great. So is the competition. Remote and hybrid jobs are attracting seven times more applicants than in-person roles. However, if you are doing events like this, pursuing training and coaching and learning how to search and present yourself well as an applicant, you are positioning yourself ahead of those who are not doing the work. When we ask employees... <laughs> Uh, their most desired flexible benefit. It's not a surprise to you after the statistic I just shared that remote work is the most sought after flexible work benefit. And here's why. Remote work comes with many other benefits that include things like flexibility, more independence and control over your day. People report increased productivity and efficiency as a remote worker. And also there's a big time savings and a money savings uh, in terms of eliminating that commute. So you have more control over your day. Well, let's talk about these skills that can make you a more competitive remote worker. As I mentioned, the demand is growing for remote work. So you want to ensure you are presenting yourself to employers as a candidate who can meet the requirements of being a successful remote worker because in addition to having the specific skills and experience to do the role, you also need to have these skills to be successful in a remote environment. Number one, working independently. Employers that hire remote employees expect their workers to know their job and meet expectations without handholding. Virtual workspaces certainly allow for communicating uh, with others, um, but responses from your manager or coworkers often aren't as quick as it would be to pop into an office or discussing an issue with a coworker who has a cubicle right next to you or right next to your office. You may have times during your workday that you are working asynchronously with out any other member of your team online, and then other times each day that you are working in sync or at the same time with members of your team and your manager. So as a result, remote workers really need the ability to work independently, which includes relying on your resourcefulness, problem-solving skills, and ability to troubleshoot situations and challenges as they occur during the day. Self-motivation is the second remote work skill I want to talk about because there's no there's no boss or manager that is going to physically check on you in your home office. It is important for you to have the self-motivation to be self-initiating enough to get your work done on time. Creating your own schedule and routine can help keep you, not can, will help keep you focused and on task. And it also can help you limit distractions, but you also need to be aware of what those distractions are and minimize those to the best of your ability. If you have kiddos at home, hiring supervised care for them while you're working or finding other ways to keep them busy while you are working is crucial. And it isn't often a hard requirement to have an actual office in your house. Having a designated space, however, makes a lot of sense with a door, um, which can allow or can provide uh, a barrier to household distractions, things like the television or laundry, or in my situation, I don't know if anyone can relate, it's the kitchen <laughs> and things that need to be done in there. So having a space for your work can help you focus and have a clear head through the day and keep you motivated to get your tasks completed. We'll talk about communication a few times in this presentation, but because video and phone conferencing are essential for connecting with your team members, your boss, your colleagues in a remote environment, your communication skills need to be on point 
when working with a remote team. Email and other messaging tools are really popular in remote work environments, especially if you are working with colleagues across the globe, in different time zones, even across the country, right? Um, it's possible, probable at some point with remote work, miscommunication and a lack of message clarity wastes some time and causes frustration among workers. So this is why being aware of and having strong written combination communication is so key. So you need to be able to write clearly, succinctly, and whether it's through email, online messaging, or a note in a project management program, your written communication needs to be on point. So speaking of written communication, the, the way that you do that in a remote environment is not on paper, right? It's not taking pen to paper. It is through digital communication tools. So having a comfort with these tools is another critical component for your success as a remote employee. For any remote company, being able to collaborate effectively in this type of environment is a top priority and requirement of the employees at an organization. Remote collaboration does require use of online and digital resources. So that means you have to get comfortable with things like project management programs, video software, and company-specific platforms. And this varies, right? Each company is going to have their own tools, their own methods for getting work done, keeping track of how work is getting done, and also keeping you and other team members engaged so you can feel at ease with learning and using the new um, communication or the digital tools at the organization. On the slide, you will see a few examples of digital communication tools. This is by no means an inclusive list of everything that's out there. And you don't necessarily need to learn every one of these in each of the categories. Um, I would suggest looking at one or two from each category and even better to prioritize in a more laser focused way to the types of jobs you are looking for, what I would do is look at a few job postings that might relate to what you're looking to apply for and see what tools come up the most frequently. You might see Google Workspace on five out of five job postings and you might not see Zoom at all. So I would prioritize Google Workspace in that instance. Again, this has communication woven throughout it, this, this skill of being a team player with cross-cultural literacy, because while working remotely means working at home alone, or you know, if you're a digital nomad somewhere around the world working alone, it does not mean you are working alone, <laughs> right? Um, you have other people that you are working with as part of a larger team. So the ability to communicate and collaborate with those team members are essential. This means you will fulfill your duties well. You will get them done on time. You are holding yourself accountable to other team members and keeping them informed of your progress or of anything that also involves them. You know, one of the biggest advantages of remote work for employers is the ability to hire the best workers, regardless of where they live. Many companies can hire from multiple states or multiple locations. There are even organizations that can hire people from anywhere in the world. So this means your coworkers may be 10 time zones away. They may be three continents away, which makes for an interesting and dynamic work culture. But it can also present problems because then that means there are likely language barriers, communication styles that differ, different cultures and traditions that vary all around the world. So it's crucial that you are aware of and sensitive to these differences as you sort of incorporate yourself into your remote team. All right, let's talk about equipment for a little bit because part of being a successful remote worker means having the right 
equipment. And some employers actually will ship you company-owned equipment as a new employee, or they may provide you a stipend or a reimbursement for equipment that you purchase. Stipends will allow you a certain amount of money, either per quarter or per year, just depends on the organization. And you can spend that on whatever technology and equipment you might need to work remotely. So things like computers, wireless keyboards, uh, headsets, computer chargers, even a laptop stand, things like that could fall under a technology stipend. Employees would typically purchase these items on their own, submit their receipts to the company for reimbursement. Some employers might not provide any technology or computer equipment needed to do the job. Um, so you might be responsible for bringing or obtaining the tools you need. For a lot of new remote workers, typically your existing computer is sufficient, uh, but for some employers, you may need to do a test for your internet speed. And on the slide, I've added speedtest.net as a, an example of a place that you can go to test your internet speed. Some companies might have their own uh, tester that they want you to use too. So that's, that's totally fine and within reason. Um, you might notice in a job posting that there are specific technical requirements uh, that might mean buying new equipment like a new computer or Mac. You might need a specific headset or specific software and services in order to run the program that the company uses. When working remotely, it's important not to forget that much of your work is going to be done through online channels, if not all of it. So it's crucial that you have good security in place, including secure internet access and uh, antivirus applications. If you go to work somewhere outside of your home, like a local coffee shop, you should have a password protected hotspot instead of using free unsecured Wi-Fi. All right, last skill I wanna talk about today uh, for the top seven skills is emotional intelligence. This is the ability to accurately identify your emotions and the emotions of others. Managing these emotions, including controlling them and your ability to influence others' emotions, like being able to calm them down or cheering them up, are all part of emotional intelligence. You can also use your emotions to apply to tasks like thinking and problem solving. And really, in essence, emotional intelligence enables you to be self-aware, empathetic, and adaptable in the face of remote work challenges that you come across during your time as a remote worker, because those do arise. In a remote work environment, you're probably aware and you probably have picked up on already that you don't always have access to nonverbal cues that can help us, quote unquote, read the room in an in-person situation. So because we can't read the room or access those cues, we still need to respond appropriately and having high emotional intelligence or EQ uh, when, it's, when it's shortened helps you solve these problems, resolve conflicts that you might encounter um, with your organization in terms of team members or colleagues, and really will help you listen and understand what they are trying to say. So EQ is an important thing. Okay, so what skills do you have? How do you how do you know? Here we go. Let's talk about this. First and foremost, ask yourself if you need to develop any of these skills that we talked about to improve your success as a remote worker. Okay, so think through your work experience, the successes that you've had at previous jobs, and see if any of these skills align with some of your strengths. If you aren't sure, you can always take a soft skills test or an expert skills test that will measure your digital and other work skills. As a FlexJobs member, you have free access to over 100 different skills tests, soft skills and expert skills tests. So I encourage you to take a peek at those. 
other platforms um, have skills tests as well. I know that LinkedIn is expanding skills tests and building out skills tests. I took a Microsoft Office one. I passed, so I got a skill badge on my LinkedIn profile. Uh, when I successfully completed it. I know LinkedIn also has skills tests for uh, technology, um, jobs, programming, coding, things like that. So that might be another option for you to explore uh, determining your skill set as well. As a coach, I always uh, told clients, you know, the skills tests are really great for a couple of reasons. To help you know and understand where your skill set is, you might find that you are stronger in an area that you weren't aware of, like maybe you want to get into writing um, and you take a copywriting or a proofreading quiz test, skills test, and you do really well on it. Well, this is a strength that then you can capitalize on. You might also find that something that you feel like you have a lot of know-how on and you take a skills test and maybe you didn't score as well as you thought you should have that can give you some information on what to pursue going forward. So these are good things to help you determine your complete skill set and where to go to build them and move forward to increase the competitiveness of your your candidacy. Okay, so I already gave a little bit of a sneak peek on deciding what skills to develop. Uh, but one thing that can help is to ask yourself a question. You know, if you're looking at a new job or a career change and there's certifications required or upskilling required, are you willing or able to invest the time and money to develop these skills because sometimes you can get certifications and they do have a fee associated with them. FlexJobs members can take popular soft skills courses to improve where needed on the FlexJobs Learning Center. So if you are a FlexJobs member, you have access to some um, upskilling courses as well. Um, if it's a matter of looking at digital tools, um, and upskilling to learn, you know, some, some more common tools or increase your technical skills. You can often learn these by watching YouTube videos or learning them online or executing a free online trial. Many of these programs do have that. So that's something that might be part of your action plan and does not take too much time to incorporate those, those upskilling um, activities uh, into your job search efforts. All right. So now you know the skills that you have. We've talked about those seven important skills. You know what they are. How can you then take that knowledge and show it or share it with an employer? You're going to use your resume to start and cover letter, but we're going to specifically talk about your resume. All right. So I have a job posting um, here that I want everybody to take a few seconds to look at because it's important to include key skills from the job description uh, to the for the job that you are applying for, as well as the key remote skills that you might see in a job posting as well. You must analyze the job description, highlight the skills you have, and then include those skills on your resume. So you'll see a sample job description. Um, take note either um, in your mind or if you want to write it down or include it in the chat section, write out what you think are some skills you could place in the summary and skills section at the top of your resume from this example. I'll give you guys a few seconds to read the job posting and think through some of those skills. Now, the second question involves technology. What are some skills mentioned in the job posting that you might be able to include in the technology section of the resume from this example? All right, good. Thank you guys uh, for adding some of that to the chat um, and also just reading through and getting a feel for what you might see in a job posting. Now, uh, let's look at an example of what adding these skills from the job description along with some top remote skills looks like in a skills and summary section as well as a technology section of your resume. 
And again, I just want to put a little asterisk on this. This is, of course, based on your skills, the skills that you have. So this is going to be personalized to what you have. But this marketing associate said, detail-oriented and self-motivated, right? One of those skills. Professional with two plus years of PPC paid search experience. Demonstrated ability to work independently, another skill, and communicate, another one, effectively with people from diverse backgrounds. <clears throat> That's the teamwork and cultural literacy, including executive team members. Successfully creates automated bid strategies while managing monthly campaign budgets. Deadline driven and committed to developing engaging content that expires, uh, inspires action. All right. Then we see a list of keywords, and I can see some more of the top seven skills listed. Written communication, emotional intelligence, teamwork, and we also have an idea of technology skills in terms of um, automated bid strategies, digital marketing, et cetera. But you can see more specifically in the technology section, WordPress, Google, automated bid strategies, Google Ads. Google Analytics, Canva, Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. You can also see the collaboration tools. It's important to write out the specific tools that you know, like Slack, Zoom, Skype, and so on. And one really nice thing that you can add to a resume to show that you embrace change or embrace learning and have a growth mindset is that you are able to quickly learn new technology and tools. So that's something you can consider adding uh, as well. All right. So what do you do after this presentation? Um, let's talk about three quick things that you can do to make yourself um, more successful as a job seeker and remote worker. So think about what skills you already have. You should have those written down. You should have those highlighted. You should be confident in the skills that you already have. You also want to have a list or a column of those skills that you would like to enhance or develop out more, more thoroughly. Of those skills that you'd like to develop out more thoroughly, hone in on those, figure out a way to learn, to enhance, to upskill or reskill in those areas. So put a plan together for that. And then finally, you are going to demonstrate those skills and add them to your resume so that those people looking at your application and the applicant tracking system can pick up on the key skills that are required for a remote worker at the particular organization that you are applying to. All right, before we go into our questions, we are going to send a copy of this recording as a reminder. So be on the lookout for that. And if you don't see it within a week, please check that spam folder as a reminder again. Uh, please, 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 if you have any other needs for your job search, we have a, a, a lot of resources available to you to include the Flex Jobs blog with thousands of free articles on any topic that you might encounter in your job search. For those questions, I am going to start answering those questions in a few seconds. A reminder to please put those in the Q&A section and upvote any of those questions you would like um, answered so that we can prioritize them um, by priority, I guess. So without uh, any more delay, let's go ahead and answer, answer those questions. <laughs> All right, we've got a good list of questions already in the Q&A, so thank you for that. Um, let's see, to kick us off, what are the best resources to learn these digital communication tools, if no experience with some of them? Google or YouTube tutorials? Yes, that works. Uh, and what else? Other things that are available, some of these tools, uh, if not all of them, do have some level of a free trial. Sometimes it's like a free two-week trial. Uh, sometimes you can just go to the website and there's a demo or there are um, videos on each particular website. I know for Zoom in particular, uh, because we used to use Zoom a lot for uh, webinars instead of Big Marker. 
I would uh, go to the Zoom website and uh, look in their help section for the how-to videos that they have. Um, but yes, Google is a place to start. YouTube tutorials, uh, the actual platform, I would go to that website and see what they might offer. Also, for some, I, and I don't know if all of these would be available, but you might find some um, you know, quick courses that you could take like Skillshare or Udemy or something like that. Um, I think that LinkedIn might also have um, some courses like maybe in Word or Excel or, or, or things along those lines. So those there's quite a few different places you can go to look, but I would certainly start with a Google search and YouTube tutorials. Those are, of course, always uh, no cost. Um, let's see about software skills in an application form. An employer asks whether applicants have expertise in using a certain software. What is the exact definition of expertise and should I not apply if I don't have enough of it? I've used the software a long time ago and could take a class to refresh my skills. Thanks. So part of this, um, the, the, the expertise level, I think is this is hard to define and it's really dependent upon the company and the job. So if a job posting, um, you know, for career coaching, for example, um, I think in the job posting, it said must be familiar with Google Docs, sheets and slides or, or something along those lines. Well, I know how to read a sheet. I know how to, you know, create a formula like adding a sum, actually, I think is the, how, how it's uh, referred to. Um, so that is not, to me, um, an expertise level, right? But I don't need to be an expert to do the career coaching job. So if you are doing something uh, like coding or programming, and there's a specific language that you need to be an expert in, I would say that you need to have a really good understanding on day one to go in and do a task that might be assigned to you, um, you know, without needing assistance. This this is somewhat opinion, but it's it's really going to vary based on the type of work that you are doing. If you are seeing a certain software in job postings for jobs that you are interested in applying to um, and you feel like you have used it, you're not sure if you are, you know, as um, you know, tight on the knowledge of the skill anymore as you used to be, then I would start layering in some skill building for that skill right now so that you can feel confident, confident and certainly more comfortable when you apply to the job. Do potential employers see your score number on skills tests or just that you've passed? So on the FlexJob site, they will see that you passed. Um, I believe they see a percentage, but only if it's if you pass, if it's over 70%. And you can always adjust those if you don't want them to be on your profile as well. But yep, they can see that information. Um, would you make yourself more marketable by indicating on your resume that you are available for both remote and hybrid work? It, you know, this is possible, but I think that what you want to do is tailor your resume for the job that you are applying for. So if you are applying for a hybrid job, you know, and you have a job where you worked in a hybrid model, make sure you use the word hybrid on your resume or in your cover letter. And the same goes for if you are applying for a remote job and you have remote work experience. I am disabled and would like to know if I have to say this uh, in the application. Um, this is this is up to you. I There is no requirement for you to um, say anything. Uh, companies generally ask on the application. I'm sure uh, many of you have seen those questions. Um, and part of the reason that they might be asking is so that they know if they need to provide or can provide any assistive technology, if that might be something um, that would be needed for the type of role that you would be doing. Um, I would say if the disability that you have would impede your ability to do the job in some way or at certain times, then you likely need to have a discussion with the potential employer about that. Uh, but if it would be transparent to the employer, if you're working remotely and, you know, you, um, 
your your disability doesn't have to do with the type of work that you would be doing or wouldn't be apparent by the type of work that you are doing, then, um, you know, you're, you, you don't have to disclose that. How do we make sure these skills are highlighted in our resumes and cover letters since it's nearly impossible to get an interview otherwise? Uh, hopefully the slides that we went over on the profile summary and key skills section were helpful. I would make sure to include these skills there. I also think in your cover letter, as you highlight some key points in your career that are related to the job, you can pepper in maybe some of these terms or allude to some of these skills. Don't forget about other channels that you have that are essentially marketing materials for your career, like any digital platform. Um, those are ways that you can also continue to brand yourself as somebody who is able to, capable to, and has been successful with remote and hybrid work. How do you communicate that you are skilled at EQ? Yeah, this is a great question. You know, I think that I would pull out some specific sub skills of, you know, emotional intelligence, uh, relationship building, active listening, um, you know, maybe like a needs analysis, you know, asking the right questions because you're doing active listening, you know, those types of things, empathy, um, you know, understanding uh, a genuine nature. These are some ways that you can communicate um, about your ability with EQ. Now, the other thing to think about here is when you are looking to present certain skills or uh, um, strengths to an employer, particularly in an interview. So think about if you were asked a question about, tell me about a time when you had to manage a project or something along those lines. You're going to answer that question using the STAR behavioral technique, situation, task, action, and result. And that would be a really great opportunity as you're formulating your answer or your little career story to answer that question to throw in some of those key skills that are related to EQ and some of the other remote, uh, remote friendly, remote desired skills by employers. Oh, thanks, Joyce. Coursera uh, has free skills courses, so be sure to check out Coursera. Um, sorry if I didn't mention that one. It's strange because I do, I've used Coursera myself, actually. Um, so thank you for that tip. Um, let's see. Is it always important to share your level of expertise with a skill level? So for, we don't typically on the coaching team when we're writing resumes, um, when we are doing a technology section, for example, and we list um, remote friendly tools like Zoom, Slack, GoToMeeting, we typically don't indicate um, a skill level at each of those skills. I think it is important to do that if the job posting specifically mentions a level of skill that's required. Um, you know, so there's, it's a possibility you might share that on an application, but there, it's also a possibility that you, that you won't need to. How do you set yourself apart when you have been working remotely for seven years while everyone else has only pivoted in the last three years? You know, one thing that you could do is um, in your profile summary, um, you want to get be careful here because you don't want to date yourself. So I think you'd be safe to say something like more than five years remote work experience. Uh, so you could specifically call out the number of years of remote work experience or more than seven years of remote work experience, particularly because you were doing it, you know, well before um, a lot of other people uh, were, were kind of uh, thrust into remote work. I think one of the things that you can really show to our um with the experience you have possibly working with distributed team or distributed customers, you know, tie in some of the results, um, you know, maybe if it's a global on a global scale or across different time zones, you can add phraseology like that, um, that might fit and work uh, within your resume bullets or on your cover letter. Also your other social channels too. Would you mention your skills test results on your soft skills 
verbally in an interview? I think you can if it fits and if it's a particular skill that you know the organization is relying on their next hire to have or to have a strength in, you know, certainly that's something that you would be able to share, you know, kind of a quantifiable result uh, for something like that. So I continually uh, score high in, you know, um, X soft skills test, which would give me the opportunity to, you know, dive right into this role and be really comfortable performing such and such task or something along those lines in relation to what you're reading in the job posting. I've been told that listing Microsoft Office as a skill is not needed anymore, that it is sort of considered as a given in today's marketplace. I've heard both ways. Yes, still enter it and no, don't need to. Yeah, I know there's there's all of this. Um, you know, you could probably pull five different people and you might hear five different answers for some of these questions. What I think is important is that if a job posting specifically says Microsoft Office or MS Office or Office Suite, you do include it because that's a tool that they are looking for somebody to have familiarity with. And if you leave it off, it will not show up, you know, if they're using an applicant tracking system as a match to that particular skill. Um, if it's not listed in the job posting and, um, you know, then you, I think you have a little bit more freedom to not include it because you know, most of us uh, do know how to use it. I would say the majority of people do know how to use Microsoft Office, but not everybody. Um, and so that's that's an important point as well. Uh, do employers have the ability to search profiles within flex jobs? Yes, they can search profiles within flex jobs. They can search by uh, various skill and they can um, find profiles uh, in the job category that they're looking for with the skill set that they're looking for. And then they would be able to uh, view the resume of those particular people. Can you retake skills tests to improve the score and employer only see the highest score? Uh, yep, I believe that's the case. They certainly would not see any low score. Um, and actually, I haven't, uh, forgive me, I haven't been in my account lately to see if you can delete those scores, but I, I think you can. So if you retake a test, um, I think you can either remove or delete your previous score too. Um, so that is... I think that's the case. <laughs> um, if you run into a question while you're doing a skills test or after, always reach out to client services because they are here to answer any of those questions and they're available live uh, during regular business hours. Um, and so they would be able to help you. And if they're not in when you're doing it, they will get back to you um, as soon as they can. Can I have too many skills listed on my FlexJobs resume or should I include all I can? Now, if you're talking about the resume that you've uploaded to the FlexJobs site, that's typically your master resume that you use to tailor for each job that you apply for. And so that's either a word, that's usually a Word document, might be a PDF document. If you're talking about the resume profile on FlexJobs, you can include skills, um, you know, as many as you want. I, I don't know that there's a limit. I do know on LinkedIn, you can have 50 skills listed on your LinkedIn profile. And we do encourage you to fill that skill list as much as you are able to with the skill set that you have. Um, you might not always get to 50, but you might have 30 or 35. That helps the algorithms for people who are searching for the type of skill set that you might have. So to be able to showcase your true skills and your breadth of skills to include as many as you have, I think is a great idea. All right, let's see. I think I probably have time for one more question. Uh, if you have been out of the workforce for a significant time, should you be upfront about your career break on your resume? Absolutely. We know that recruiters are more likely by 60% um, to interview somebody um, who has listed a reason for their career break versus just leaving it off their resume completely. When you do that, um, people will, I, I, making assumptions is not the right word, but they're going to pause and wonder why is there this 
break in the resume and certain things may run through their mind that might not be anywhere close to the truth. So being able to have a quick bullet or a placeholder that says planned career break, uh, professionally active career break or career break um, with a bullet that says, you know, stepped out of the workforce for this or one of many people laid off due to the pandemic, excited and energized to return to work. That's really all you need to say. It doesn't have to be um, long. Uh, very brief is good, but just a, a way to kind of shape the narrative around your story so that there aren't um, false assumptions made about why you were out of uh, the workforce. All right. Great questions today. Hopefully this was really helpful. I see some great comments. We are always excited to have you at our webinars. We will be back next week with some more. So please feel free to join us uh, for those topics that are coming up. And uh, thanks so much. We will talk to you later. Bye, everybody.